Ignition sequence start. Six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. Liftoff. We have a liftoff. Hey everybody, this is the Digital Asset Investor, and the reason that I am behind schedule today is because many I'm contacted and, I, and there's a lot of people from different companies in digital assets that will talk to me from time to time, and today I had two very fascinating conversations, and I'm going to tell you about a couple of those here in a minute. I think you'll find it'll, it's a real eye-opener, uh, but also I've been getting ready because today... Um, I'm going to be cooking barbecue chicken on the grill this evening, and I've been I had to get do some prep work, but I'm I've I found barbecue sauce I'm using. I'm I'm thinking about going and trying a new barbecue sauce, and, and I might do that after I do this video. Go get a new test out a new barbecue sauce, but I'm not. That's kind of risky, so we'll see. But for those of you who haven't seen it. You can go and you can, I, I'm going to let you watch me. I do these short videos. YouTube has these YouTube stories now that you can see on your phone. And you'll see these little short videos where I put music and uh, different pictures and, and video on. And I'm going to show you the barbecue chicken that I'm cooking tonight. I'm going to do that this evening. So there you have it. Now, this first tweet caught my attention. This is from CSTAT. Um, it, it, there's two things that caught my attention. Um, the first is triple ripple ice cream cone right here. It says triple ripple ice cream cone. I don't remember ever having that. But the other thing that he's retweeting here is prices at McDonald's in 1971. We need to end this fiat currency system. And I've said for, I've said many times on this channel is that a lie has been sold to you, and that is that your money is supposed to devalue over time, and that is a lie. I, it, I should not have paid a dollar and fifty cent when I was a kid at a movie theater. And now be paying twenty something dollars for a movie ticket. That is ridiculous. It doesn't have to be that way. I believe digital assets in limited amount are one of the solutions to this problem. But this, it, we are, our money is not supposed to become worthless over time. That is not true. It's been sold to this world, and it's not true. That is a central bank lie, and that's just the fact, Jack. All right, I haven't sh talked about Sologenic lately, but I saw this and wanted to uh, mention it. These guys, remember, they're built, they built these, the Solo platform on top of the XRP ledger, and so they deserve some support here. Solo is now listed on these crypto exchanges. These exchanges serve countries all around the world. More exchanges will be coming soon. Where will you get your Solo? So these exchanges right here, um, they're going to be traded on, and I'm sure that's going to expand. I had not looked at the Solo price le recently, and so I went to check it out, and here's, I'm doing a refresh right here. Um, this came out at um, 25 cents, so it's come up in price a little bit. I, I would imagine that as they um, get on more and more exchanges, this their prospects will get better and better and better. Um, <clears throat> and that's from the guys at Coinfield that came out with Solo, the Solo token. And remember, the Solo token allows you to buy tokenized stocks. And we're going to be talking about tokenization a bit more in this video. Some exciting things I want to show you. Um, and this is from Free Zero Hedge. I don't know if this is the official Zero Hedge handle yet or not. It must be because it's got a lot of followers. Goldman sees global oil storage full in three to four weeks. Expects another oil price crash. This video below this was very eye-opening. These are tankers. Crude measures. Dozens of tankers wait to unload oil. That right there, folks spells disaster when I look at it. It looks like a nightmare. The idea that all these ship tankers are just sitting there. I mean, aren't we? We're not entering hurricane season yet, but I mean, just seeing that is pretty creepy. We're in some, we're in some crazy times right now, folks. Cryptopolis um, mortgage bailout balloons by half a million more loans in one week. I believe that you are what we are in the midst of seeing is a a mortgage and um, a mortgage crisis and a crisis in car loans that we've never seen. It's going to make 
2008 looked like Mickey Mouse. Okay, it's gonna 2008 is gonna be a, a big party compared to what this is. I'm afraid. All right, um, and then I got the, for XRP Crypto Wolf had tweeted this out from BIS. Um, said the first CBDC will be ready in September and it will establish an approach between Europe, England, Sweden, Canada, Japan, Switzerland, and U.S. We're going to identify common principles, in particular interoperability between whatever. Inter interoperability is the key word there. I'm convinced beyond France and Europe that this crisis will accelerate technological changes, in particular in the financial field. It will give a boost to digital finance, both in banking and payments. We will need digital finance instruments to make this new world work. It's coming, folks. The new world. I don't care. I don't care how long you've been in a bear market. I don't care how frustrated you are. I don't care how um, how much you've lost your belief in digital assets, specifically XRP. If you are one of those people, you're flat out wrong, and you need to sit up in your chair, straighten up, and get ready because this genie does not go back in the bottle. The world's about to change and you need to understand what you own. I would say it to, I've seen a lot of people who I thought understood what they own that do not understand what they own. But don't forget, because it's not just a slogan, even though I created the slogan, XRP is the one. It's the greatest digital asset ever created, and it's a bigger thing than what you, than what many think. It's not just some, it's not just some digital asset that we're sitting around waiting for the next pump. That's not what you hold. And if you think that's what you hold, go back and watch some more of my videos. Go back and watch a lot of different people's videos and you'll understand. It'll all come together in your mind. Chinu Patel at Chinu Patel 29. Michael at VAL Five Links. Holdings of U.S. Treasuries rose to 3.9 trillion. The central bank has been purchasing treasuries in a bid to restore functioning to this key um, U.S. financial market. The central bank's holdings of mortgage-backed securities rose uh, to now 1.6 trillion. Does that spell nightmare to you? It does to me. Michelle Vandenberg sent me this. Now remember, this is not just a tweet from anybody. This guy, Ashish Sadanand, I guess is how you say that, CTO, Director of SBI Ripple Asia. Look what he says. RippleNet is, is eliminating the hassles and establishing cost-effective measures to remit money into China. Recently, RippleNet member Niam par partnered with GeoSwift is set for, for real-time remittances applicable to 14 major banks and within 48 hours, for 50 other banks, right? This is a guy that would know. This is into China. Who else? Is, is, is your company that's working on a use case for a digital asset working their, their way into China? I don't know of too many. Yesterday, we talked about Miguel Valles. I, I showed you his greatest tweet hits because remember, we, we're pretty sure that, that Miguel Valles has left Ripple as the head of XRP markets. I went through a lot of his tweets yesterday, but I didn't show you much of his video greatest hits. I want to do some of that today, um, but he, this is his LinkedIn page, and um, I think it said maybe he's down in, uh, he's in Miami. I think he's from Cuba. But anyway, I went to Ripple's site to see if they're hiring any, anybody at their New York office where he was, and it turns out they're not hiring anybody up there. So the question, I guess, is do they need, not need a head of XRP markets anymore? And I want to make a, I want to, no pun intended, I want to float an idea out to you. Is it possible that, and this is how I think of it in my mind, because we always knew that it was eventually going to happen, is it possible that we should compare the XRP ledger to a raft that is being pushed out to sea right now. Because the XRP ledger, remember, it was all, they have been working on, a, and I think David Schwartz said it maybe in 2018 or 19, that that was the year they were gonna focus on, on further decentralization. So at some point, and this is how I pictured in my mind, at some point, the XRP ledger is on one of those round rafts like the one from the movie Castaway that he got in when he got off the plane. It's in this round raft and Ripple 
I picture Ripple pushing this XRP ledger out into the ocean, into the ocean of the world. And that is when XRP from then on is on its own. And then all of a sudden, we start seeing nodes light up like a Christmas tree, whether it's a node at the SEC, at Standard Chartered, BlackRock, BNY Mellon. It could be the IMF, the World Bank. It could be central banks around the world. It could be Duke University or Oxford University. That's where I see all of this going. And that's why I think Miguel Baez left. I think he had a mission accomplished um, situation where it was time to go. And he's probably going to go um, consult and relax and be able to do what he wants to do. So good for him. Thanks for your work, Miguel Baez. But while we're here, I wanted to show you some of Miguel Vias's greatest hits in video uh, before we leave this. The more liquidity, the more utility, in theory, over time, the more valuable XRP will be. Because the more liquidity, the more utility, in theory, over time, the more valuable XRP will be. All right. More, more liquidity, more utility, the, the higher the value of XRP over time. That's why we're all here, is that we all have believed this. And I believe it more than ever today. Here's another one. This is from Stephen uh, Bull from the DIA. And to distribute the rest of, rest of the XRP then? Yeah, no, that's, that's a good question, Mahir. And I, I don't necessarily know that we'll ever distribute all of it. In my mind's eye, there's a possibility where, you know, we end up more of a lending kind of, uh, you know, more of a lending lender of last resort capacity, maybe. Uh, I think that would be a little strange for a software company and maybe some things would have to to change structurally, maybe we have to have a different organization or something, who knows, right? Um, but as these capital markets develop, as liquidity develops, there are gonna be folks who, you know, if they wanna provide liquidity in the asset, don't wanna necessarily own the asset because that puts them in harm's way for uh, price movements. So if you can borrow the asset and create liquidity that way, it's actually a much more efficient way to be part of the uh, of their liquidity mechanism. It's how traditional capital markets work. I mean, my first job on a trading desk was managing the repo book, the overnight Tom Next kind of liquidity provision that every day we had to roll. Uh, there's nothing like that in digital assets. Um, so part, partly because they, they, the transfers happen instantaneously, but also partly because it just hasn't developed. And it, it, one of my longer term goals after I get the ecosystem built out, after I get payments running through there, as I start to merge, I try to merge the two worlds, the digital asset markets and the traditional capital markets. As I try to do that, I think one of the levers that we'll be able to pull or pull will be lending. And as a result, I don't necessarily know that we'll, I mean, we'll have to, we'll need some XRP, right, in order to do that. Um, so I don't, I don't, I guess a long way of saying, I'm not sure we'll ever get rid of all of it and sort of let it all out into the wild. Um, partly because there is some utility for us or maybe some other, you know, organization having it to make sure that the markets are always liquid. He, he made a point that uh, I think that a lot of you holders of XRP, large holders, and when I say large, I would say 100,000 plus. Remember, he said it in the prior video, as the liquidity and the utility increases, the price is going to increase as well. Now, a lot of you You've always thought in terms of selling your XRP when it hits X price. I don't think a lot of you that are larger holders out there understand that you could very well be holding one of the greatest assets to hold in the history of the world. If you've got, if you've only got 100 billion XRP, you could end up being a lender of your XRP and be paid to lend your XRP in essence to the world's financial system and be paid to do it. Uh, that could, you could create a literal dynasty and, and almost be like a bank as your life goes forward. That is the type of opportunity that this is. Now, let's go on and I want to show you a couple of more clips from Miguel Baez. You can learn a lot from this guy. Because there is no recourse if your assets disappear uh, from your wallets um, is insurance, right? If somebody's willing to insure those losses then that can get larger financial institutions, I think, more comfortable with the idea of, 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 uh, of custodying the assets. I think also it's interesting, you know, there are folks looking at this, right? I mean, there's you know, Gemini custodies and uh, IPIT custodies and uh, Kingdom Trust custodies. Um, so it's not like no one is doing it, right? But 
we've yet to have kind of, you know, Goldman Sachs or Morgan Stanley or State Street, uh, you know, uh, a Boney. Uh, the, these guys have not jumped in yet, even though that you, you hear whispers and rumors that people are looking. Um, but one of the so one of my jobs is to, again, to create this liquidity pool for XRP and build a big capital market around it. Because without liquidity, we can't fund, you know, we can't create the liquidity that you need for funding payments through some of the some of the products that we that we're building. But even if you had, um, and I know it's all kind of chicken and egg, but even if you had the prime brokerage model and you wanted to offer leverage to your clients, that means that you now have to go out there and source a bunch of Bitcoin or Ether or XRP, and that's not easy to do, right? Uh, I think one of the advantages that we have as a company is the fact that we sit on 60 billion XRP. So the day that Goldman wants to open up their trading desk, mm -hmm. they don't have to go find, you know, XRP. They just give me a call, um, which is nice. <laughs> you know, I think it's, <laughs> and you know, interest rates in this market are pretty expensive. So it's a, it's a nice recurring revenue stream one day. Um, so I, 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 you know, that, e but that is a problem that needs to be solved somehow, right? Because you can't just have one person doing it because truthfully what happens is that Goldman borrows from Morgan, that borrows from Deutsche, that borrows from Credit Suisse, and it's a little bit of ring around the rosy, and they all end up borrowing from a central bank. Um, so um, we are using it for investments, right? So we are funding other companies with our XRP. You'll, see, you'll hear some stuff about that as well. Um, and then, but really, we, we don't want to get rid of all of it um, because we do feel like being maybe a, a primary lender in the market will be helpful as we try to build liquidity in the space. So, you know, the idea that uh, we'll be better off with no XRP, I think, is uh, is not one that we're going to so Right. So, so anyway, you can see where all this is going. You can imagine a lot of these companies being lent XRP and then lending it out themselves. You're going to see a lot of this type of thing. Um, I'm not going to play you these other two videos. I, I'm in another video. I don't want to make this one too long, but in another video, I'll do that. Now, I want to show you the first person that I had a conversation with today. Um, this is um, a guy. He runs a company called Rain, uh, Reno. He calls it Reno. And you can find this company. This is a, a, an, a real estate tokenization company, but it's more than that. And I'm going to show you. Reno, it's spelled R-E-I-N-N-O dot I-O is their website. Okay, you need to go check this out. I'm going to sign up for their service. And before I forget to mention it, their service is going to be open in May. What this is, is this is a, an, a real estate tokenization platform. Okay, they all, but they offer a couple of things. First, a, a, a person can go, a, someone who owns co commercial real estate, Let's say you own an apartment building somewhere. You can go to these guys and they will take you through the process and help you tokenize your real estate. OK, watch this. I'll show you this. And they've got the steps here. Property for tokenization, property documents, service agreement, creation of a Delaware based SPV company. Step uh, four, creation of a smart contract. And then they inspect the property uh, appraisal, successful tokenization. Now, all of the, the reason this company caught my attention is because all the companies that have talked about tokenization to this point, they, they help you tokenize your real estate or whatever it is, and then you're kind of on your own. This is different because they take it two steps further. The first thing is they, they're creating a marketplace, okay? And the marketplace is going to allow you to, when they tokenize these things, there's going to actually be a marketplace where buyers and sellers of this tokenized real estate, um, you're going to be able to find each other, the buyers and the sellers. They're going to create the liquidity. But there's another thing that they do, and I'm going to show you a, the video. The other thing is once you own these tokenized assets, they you can be lent, uh, you can borrow money based on your tokens. Watch this. Reno. Disrupting commercial real estate lending. A new instant, flexible, and paperless lending model. Are you an investor looking for an innovative commercial real estate lending solution? Reno offers instant loans backed by tokenized real estate, allowing you to unlock its full potential. Reno loans give you access to cash anytime, anywhere. Just log into the platform. Choose the amount of tokens you would like to use as collateral. 
select the term length, IR and LTV radio. Review the payment schedule. Choose your preferred payout method. Get your money in a blink of an eye. No hassle, paperwork or waiting in lines. Your access to finance is just a few clicks away. With Reno. I'm very excited about this company and I believe that these guys, uh, he, he told me that um, his name, uh, the guy that runs the company is uh, Barry, I think it's Money is his last name, but he um, he said that they are going to open up this platform in May where you can actually go on the platform and buy tokenized real estate. And he had described at least one or two properties. I think there was one in Connecticut and one in, maybe he said South Beach, I think. Um, there, but people are going to begin tokenizing their real estate. And that is exciting. Now, I want to show you something else that's really exciting. Um, I was contacted by this lady right here. Her name is B. O'Carroll. And I was contacted at first. I was like, okay, who is this person? And then I got, I, I looked her up and I realized that she was at, um, she was one of the people at the over the counter trading desk at Circle. Remember the three core companies in all of this, the, in my opinion, the three big companies in digital assets is Circle, Coinbase, and Ripple. Well, she was at the OTC desk at, um, at Circle, and then she left with some of her um, colleagues here who are also, they were also at Circle. And I believe this guy, Todd, was at Circle and at Poloniex at one time. And then the CEO is this Yin Feng Xiao guy. But um, anyway, I had a phone call with her about their platform. Their platform and their website is called reciprocitytrading.com. And by the way, these two companies I'm telling you about, they're not paying me to tell you this. I'm telling, I don't tell you about companies often that, that just people I talk to unless they're interesting to me. Here's what's interesting about this one. Many of you out there are larger holders of XRP. When it, when it comes time to sell, many of you may have very large sums of, of money that you're dealing with. Platforms like this are a way for, for bigger holders to, to liquidate their holdings and, and get into fiat or whatever they're trying to do in a, in a, um, these people have access to a lot, you know, institutions and wealthy individuals. So you can, and, and it's, it's not done by you going like the way you go into Coinbase and you put in a cell order. You actually are, are more or less messaging with this over the counter platform. But here's what else is cool about this over the counter platform is as, as uh, B called it, um, it's a boutique over the counter platform. And what that means is that they have opened this one up. You can individuals more or less have a better shot at being able to get on this platform with some restrictions. And you need to know about the restrictions. Their minimum trade size is 10K for corporate ent entities and 50K for individuals. These are all the digital currencies that they support. You'll notice that XRP is there. There's Stellar, you know, the main stuff, Ethereum, Bitcoin. Um, it, but all first you have to get, what you have to do first is you have to get approved, get through their KYC and their, their AML process. Now, the way you contact them is info at reciprocitytrading.com. Uh, and, and so you need, if you are a person who is one of the larger holders and you see a situation that, or if you're one of those people who is worried that, that in a scenario where you were doing a large sale that you, there's a question in your mind as to whether you could make that happen through a Coinbase Pro or as to whether they would have enough liquidity when in a place like that, when it comes time, then you need to contact these people. This is, this OTC platform is the closest over-the-counter platform that I've seen that caters to individuals as well as, as institutions. And for that reason, it's worthy of you looking into. And these are legit people. They're out of New York They and they've got the background. They know what they're doing. Okay. And so let me make sure I'm looking at my notes. Oh, by the way, they also, they serve, she said they serve 35 states. They are not in Georgia where I am and they're not in Florida. I know those two things, but, but they're in 35 states and, um, really smart smart lady and um so anyway check it out it's recipro 
R-E-C-I-P-R-O-C-I-T-Y trading.com. If you want to go check that out. Now, found a couple of a couple of funny things that I want, or fun, one's funny and one's just fascinating I wanted to show you. Um, the first is from Ticket Attorney. We have not talked about John McAfee lately. John Ma McAfee is hanging out and he's, he's wanting you to help him with a caption. I thought this was funny, so I thought I'd show it to you. Looking for a caption. Must be suit suitable for a right-wing fundamental Christian publication to be used in a children's Bible study class. He's got Kim Jong, is it Kim Jong Un from North Korea leaning over his bed where he's got guns and some, and some, uh, looks like he's got some wine or something <laughs> and some food and he wants you to caption this. Now I saw this. This is from Shane Nixon. I just thought this was about as cool as anything I've seen in a while. So watch it. So that's where the world's going. That reminds me of the movie, the Disney movie Wally, -E, that my son used to make me watch over and over and over. I'm the digital asset investor. I'm not an investment advisor. This is for entertainment purposes only. Please subscribe, hit the like button, tell your friends and family that we are moving into a digital asset and Wally -E world, it looks like. Thanks for listening.